We've done plenty of engines, but nothing like this. This is gonna be something special. Off the specialized coating to get the engine Cerakoted. We'll get it done. We always do. Yeah. I'm tearing up. <laughs> this all comes out here. The fact that it's a Saturday about two weeks before the SEMA show, the biggest convention in our industry. We'll be helping out today on a lockjaw project, just helping out with uh, whatever uh, fabrication they need. And We've got most of the engineering team, or a lot of the engineering team. SEMA crunch time. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's rallied, you know? Uh, all the wiring from the engine on the engine harness to the MoTeC. ECM to the PDM, fire description module. Also in the ATS, France controller module. Well, before we remove anything, we're marking where all the alignment is. That way when we throw it back on, we can line it up with the Sharpie lines and have it fit up just the way we did before we took it off. We'll have the fuel lines, this fuel lines and air lines all run along this side. Most of our electrical will run along this side. Watch your step here. We're talking about where the headers are going to be right now so that we can see where, where can we run electrical components. Um, the space claim that we made to send the truck to Sean is, is off right now. So we're just going to kind of lay it out a little bit and get an idea. Uh, I also haven't finished all of the header design yet, but we're getting close. But uh, the headers are going to basically two pipes come out on this side mm -hmm. and then two pipes run down here. So this is Dragos. He owns a shop that might be able to help us with our headers. Being in such a time crunch, um, although our welders and fabricators are amazing, they have their hands full, so we're calling in the hired guns. Two weeks left to SEMA, a lot of work to do on the truck. Gail, let's take a look at things and uh, it. see what we got going on. I, I see right a now. big hole here. Yeah. There's probably a similar one on the other side. And I got an answer for you. All right. We got that guy right over there. Hey guys. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, I'm Gail. Dragos, nice to meet you. Dragos. I did some header CAD work already. Yes. But we've got to get that out of the computer <laughs> and into, into physical reality. physical form. <laughs> so, uh, well, as long as Empire didn't put stuff where the headers go. Yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully, Sean. Sean savvied this whole thing. I'm confident. Me Absolutely. and Sean have a long history of battling for header space. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so your background with Sean goes, uh, you guys yeah. have been building custom cars together for a while. So, so you being close makes it, it is great because you can pop over here and, and help us in the short schedule we got left to get this wrapped up. Well, this yeah. is cool, this is cool. Tell me about your shop. It's a fab shop, you do, or are you spe specializing in something over there? Yeah, we mostly do prototyping and like small uh, quantity, like high quality runs of headers, exhaust mm -hmm. systems, stuff like that. So you've been doing headers for a while. You, you were at Nelson, is that right? Yeah, so I worked for Nelson Racing Engines. Uh, I used to do headers for them. Did a couple special projects there. Uh, we did the prototype for the Tatara. 
Uh, I think the headers were one of the ones that set the, the speed record. Isn't that interesting? So clearly, you've been doing headers for a while, and I've seen some of the Nelson stuff out there, and it's gorgeous. If I had more time, I would lay out a lot more stuff in CAD and do it that way. I don't know if you've worked that way in the past, if you want to work that way, if we do some sort of hybrid where I lay some stuff out in CAD and you fill in in between and uh, find so, some way that works that, yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've done this. both in the past. I've worked within you know CAD models and just built off of that. However, I know you guys are pretty tied up and I'm not going to bug you too much. I'm going to probably take the parameters that you guys want to use mm -hmm. for you know firing order, uh, primary lengths, things like that. And then we're going to plug those numbers into the best looking version <laughs> of the header that I can fit within those parameters for yeah. you guys. So it starts right here at the cylinder head and we'll give you a, it ends way back there somewhere. And then yeah, we'll be all the way Then we'll back. just get out of his way. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the CAD. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, we're going to make some stainless flanges, some, some header flanges, and then we'll get some four into one collectors and we'll build a jig off of the chassis that locates that collector where we, so it'll line up with the rest of where the exhaust is going to be that's going to mm -hmm. end up exiting out of the bedside. Mm -hmm. Then we can look in the computer at some of the stuff I've laid out and what may or may not work. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely go from there. Let the bundle of snakes loose. You tell me where to start, where to end, and what to watch out for. I can <laughs> totally appreciate what you do, and I've seen your work, and I've seen Nelson's work. Uh, the styling of the air intake plenums and all that is pure sex. Really looks good. All right, Dragos? We got a plan. Tuesday. Let's see you Tuesday and we'll get cracking on this right. stuff. Tuesday sounds good. All right. Tuesdays are real close. <laughs> <laughs> Larry! Uh, it's happening! <laughs> oh, I see lots of red in there. Oh, look at our Banks red Cerakote. Ooh, she's pretty. Okay, that's all you got. <laughs> You're a tease. You're a tease. Yeah, pretty much. Ooh, look at that. I mean, it is pretty. A little it's bit just... of the, uh, there's some gold flake in there. It's part of uh, Cerakote's Mixology series, which we are debuting at SEMA. Was it a pain in the, uh, in the keister? You have to ask Kelly that one. <laughs> How crazy that's has right. it been leading up to SEMA? I hate that word. So it's do we. Just, it's out of control. Uh, yeah. It is. There's our painter right there. How you doing? Fantastic. What's going on? This is Kelly. How'd everything? I saw it. It looked beautiful. You did a gorgeous job. It, it turned out really good. So will this be the first supercharged Duramax you will ever have coated? I could say yeah. <laughs> sure is. We've done plenty of engines, but nothing like this. This is going to be something special. So Kelly, I just felt the uh, the Cerakote. It's so slippery. Why? What is that? Uh, it's kind of a proprietary uh, formula that Cerakote um, developed probably over 20 years ago, and we were pretty instrumental in all the beginning stages of all that. We actually used to use this as an anti-graffiti coating, buildings, I mean, all sorts of things, anything you can imagine, stuff doesn't stick to it. And for years, we did it on all the high-end billet wheels, all the high-polished billet accessories and the, the hot rods and whatnot. Nobody would have to do anything, no upkeep, and stuff just wipes off. You could, you could spray paint this thing and just pressure wash it right off. Permanent markers, anything like that. It's like a dry erase board now. So you're saying we should get the supercharger, which is raw billet aluminum, bring it back to you after SEMA, and then spray it clear. Yeah, the Cerakote clear is, this stuff is amazing. Once it is coated, there's gonna be no maintenance on it. It'll stay like that, it'll preserve it pretty much forever until you remove it somehow. It's, it's really trick stuff, really trick. I do it.
Hell yeah. Cool. getting too goofy with this. Sexy as hell. I love it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I like that, the, the whole idea of what you're doing. All right, so as you guys have seen, Dragos has been killing it on the beginning of the design of these headers. However, once he gets uh, past the tubs, he's gonna need somewhere as reference to shoot the rest of his header design too. Matt already had the exhaust designed in SolidWorks from the headers back which we wanted to retain so that we can make that easy and quick. Uh, we, Matt drew up a collector jig to locate the collector where it should be to meet both of those requirements. Uh, so, <laughs> so I welded that up, got those fit in there, and as you can see down there beneath Matt, that the collectors are all mounted up in there so he can shoot his headers right down into there and we can bolt our exhaust up right after that once we make that to the CAD spec. It is snug to say the least. Uh, we're, we're working between a rock and uh, Sean's fenders steering shaft right here. And uh, we also have this oil cooler, which I didn't find out about until this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a little bit tighter than I was expecting, but it's definitely something we're gonna be able to work through. And we'll do the bottom, make sure that we're clearing the wheels, make sure that we're clearing everything else. And uh, hopefully that, that wraps it all up. <laughs> We're just gonna replicate what we see on that side to this side. We don't have any constraints on the back over here like we do over there. So it's, it's just gonna be so much easier. Piece of cake on, compared to that side. We're uh, fitting a round peg into a square hole. All right, so we finally got this side tacked together. Obviously the main challenges were squeezing through our steering shaft, making sure that our inner fender is clearing the headers and that the wheel is also clearing. Now comes the fun part. We get the blow it apart, take it to my shop, prep it, clean it, weld it all up, take it on, put it off, put it back on. And then next time you see it, it's gonna be looking real, real nice.